Hi everyone, um, we are here in beautiful Krakow for the ACI World uh, Customer Experience Global Summit and I'm joined here by Joanne Gallon, who is President and CEO of Fredericton International Airport Authority. So Joanne, thank you so much for joining me today. A pleasure. My first question for you is how is the recovery of your airport actually going and how was the summer 2022? Yeah, so very exciting. We actually saw recovery in 2022. So we're about 75% of our passenger numbers that we would have seen in 2019. It's just great to see the airlines coming back, like Air Canada with their frequency. We got Porter, WestJet. We have a, a new airline called PAL Airline. They're um, uh, an Atlantic Canada-based airline. And even Sunwing, which was doing Sun Charters, told us that they are doing their program for next winter so it's actually really really good to see these passengers coming back and we've noticed a pent-up demand there there was a pent-up demand so as soon as people could book flights they were on their way and and as soon also as the restriction lifted because as you know in canada uh, there was some really strict restriction uh, provincially and also uh, at a national level so it came back with a vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I should know that during these restrictions, we actually had lost six months of flights. Yeah. Um, and we were right in the middle of a construction project at that time. But um, And we had to let go of some, some employees. And, and happy to say that most of them are all back. So really excited about not only the air service back and the passenger, but also having our team back and having all our tenants back with their team. Yeah, yeah, that's really great to hear. And I just want to touch on that construction project because uh, I know you finished your airport expansion project during the pandemic. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the project and what it means for the future growth um, growth of your airport? Yeah, that was an exciting project, uh, a bit concerning during the pandemic because we were right in the middle of the construction when everything came to a halt. Um, but there was a positive in that. We didn't see it at the time, but it became a positive because we could go, we could focus solely on that project. So we ended up finishing the project ahead of schedule, four months ahead of schedule, and then about $600,000 under budget, which is like, a rare thing for That's airports, so good. yeah. That's good. And now we've got this brand new airport um, with all the amenities that's needed, right, at this century. And now the passengers are back and they're discovering it, right? Because they didn't discover it during the pandemic; they weren't there. And now they're coming in and seeing the new airport. So it's it's really exciting times for us. And I watched a very short video about the new, um, well, the new project, and it said that um, it was specifically very good for families. So could you tell us a little bit about the features? Like that are for families? Yes, so a lot of things that we upgraded and one of them is the family aspect is that we have now a play area for kids. Uh, we have room dedicated for, for, uh, for families to be able to refresh and so on. So really made it uh, the airport part of that um, to make families comfortable. And the other thing that we did is upgrade all the amenities as in the plugs in for phones and, and that's on every seat now, that was so important. Mm -hmm. And we brought in a local entrepreneur to do the coffee and pastries and sandwich and, and brew on tap. So you're really having quality food and drinks at the airport, uh, which um, that is a level up for us. And, and all kinds of other things like that, like natural lighting um, has a, makes a big difference in the terminal. As in before, it was it was dark, and now you're seeing natural light coming in and artwork. We've got a special piece of artwork that's coming. That's going to be amazing. A huge mural. It's an Aboriginal piece uh, that will show up in the spring. Really excited. So, uh, at many levels, we were able to upgrade. That sounds fantastic, yeah. and I look forward to seeing the new artwork. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, now you were nominated uh, and a finalist for a career achievement award uh, with the local chamber. Congratulations. Merci. Can you tell us a bit more about the award and why it was that you were nominated? Yes, I still don't know who nominated me, but it was, it's a great uh, feeling to be nominated for a career achievement award. Um, basically, it's your journey as a career and uh, I, I find it really exciting. Um, I'm involved in many things, so I'm also on four boards, uh, airport boards and, and economic boards. I feel that's really important on top of the work is to contribute to that. I do mentorship for a female entrepreneur 
and also female leaders. Um, that's really important to me in my heart. Health is also very important. So during the pandemic, I finished my 200 hour certification for yoga teaching. Oh, yes. uh, so for me, a balanced life is also important. Um, but th this career achievement award is, is really, uh, is, is, it makes me feel, uh, you know, it, it's a special feeling. Um, I was also nominated for um, honorary colonel of Squadron 43, which is a military uh, base in uh, in our area, Base Gage Town. That was also something that uh, came in a bit as a surprise, but also it was based on my investment in um, aerospace development and for female. And um, also, uh, we work closely with the military base, so my job with them is, is being a liaison uh, between the community and the national base. So great experience. So I'd like to say that I have a diverse career, um, was uh, really blessed with uh, amazing people that I work with uh, and, and run into people like yourself and so on. So um, it's an amazing career and uh, I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah. Um, now it's great to see that you were recognized mm -hmm. um, for your fantastic work. Um, how do you feel that the industry is doing attracting the next generation of a, a diverse workforce and uh, specifically women because I know that's something you're very passionate about? I think we're seeing more and more women in the uh, transportation industry. You look at Canada, for the longest time we didn't have female managing a large airport. Now you have a female CEO at the Vancouver airport, at the Toronto airport, small airports like ours at Fredericton, Nova Scotia, the Halifax airport, and also even in Deer Lake. So, and, and our new uh, president for CAC is a female. You're seeing yes. really an integration that's happening and the younger generation is not afraid, I think has less limits. Um, so we're, we're seeing more of that and they're seeing also that it is an exciting career. Um, so I really think that uh, that transitioning is happening and diversity is important also at this stage. Uh, we need to be more diverse into ethnics and into uh, disability and so on. So I'm really trying to make some effort to, to really expand uh, our workforce. And how do you way. do that within your own airport then? Yeah, it's, it's by integrating right at your board level, at your employee, with your tenants. It, it's at all level. Yeah. Um, so how do you ensure a smooth and seamless passenger experience through airports? Because I know that's what we're here to talk about at the, the Customer Experience Summit. Yeah. So how is it? how do you envision it at your airport? It's a continuous effort to do a better job at all level. Mm -hmm. But I strongly believe, uh, like I was saying yesterday on a panel, is that if you have to create a culture, a culture of people who cares, right? Um, and that starts at, at, at all levels. And if um, employees feel that they're, uh, they're valued, I think that transfers back to the passenger. But continuously, you have to watch at your your pin, your points where it, it gets a bit a bit of frictions, and and try to improve all of that via technology, via more training, uh, via maybe the right staffing, having the right amount of people. So that's a continuous job that we all need to move the bar further up, as as you know, because in Asian Airport, uh, oh, we've we've had a. a a bit of a tough recovery when it comes to seamless um, process transition. <laughs> yeah. And I know that the theme of this conference is rehumanizing the airport experience. Do you find that in your passengers that whereas during the pandemic they were really looking for a touchless kind of seamless experience with very minimal interaction with other people, do you find now that they are craving that human interaction again? Yeah, we do. They're actually coming in, uh, since some of them haven't traveled for two years, they're coming in a bit nervous about traveling. And we're seeing that they are uh, looking for that human touch and that human uh, interaction. And uh, we find that our team is more attentive to that. I I'm finding that, you know, I've, I was watching one of our security the other day, and we have a picture, is that a security person took the time to walk an elderly woman, right, to, to her parking lot. We're seeing um, employees taking the time to, to maybe families that needs to be isolated because they're there mourning for something we give them a special room i'm finding that everybody's trying to make more efforts to make the experience better that's really really nice to hear um now during the pandemic um non-aeronautical revenues became very important to airports so what are you doing to try and develop 
maybe new and diverse revenue streams for your airport? Yeah, so we're looking at MROs, which is maintenance and repair uh, businesses. We're looking at other ways to bring in revenue. You're absolutely correct, because during the pandemic, we were mainly service, uh, servicing air ambulance, forestry protection, military, and so on. But those are not revenue generators. So you re now we're paying more attention on how we diverse so we don't depend solely on one source of revenue, which is your passenger and your airlines. Now, what's keeping you awake at night? What are the challenges that you're, you're thinking about? Good question, but I really seriously try to sleep at night because that's <laughs> important for the next day to be able to be efficient. Um, but you know, what always concerns you is it's, airports has to be top safety, right, is first. So always making sure that we are uh, doing all the training and that we are um, doing all the right things to keep it safe, right? And then the customer service and, and having the airlines because they're servicing your community. So there's many aspects and moving parts. However, really trying to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, what's on your to-do list then as a CEO um, for 2023? Yeah, so 2023 and our, our strategic plan for the next three years, it's, it's a really a refocus on rebuilding. Um, following the pandemic, it, it's trying to increase your frequency of flights to the level that the community is used to. And uh, also improving customer service, you know, in, implementing more training for that. Um, making sure also that our team support because it had been a, a, a tough two years for everyone. So rebuilding the teams and so on and, and, and offering those programs again that we used to offer. So it's a rebuild financially, business-wise and on, on all levels. So trying to get back to normal essentially as yes. quickly as possible and then enhancing the passenger experience even further than yeah. it was before. So normal and then trying to move the bar <laughs> even higher, right? Because so, I mean, airports were there to grow. So eventually surpass what we were doing in 2019 because now we got this great terminal building that can accommodate all these people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now I think I know the answer to this, but just for my final question, are you positive for the future? Always. Um, I, I mean, it, this business comes with challenges and we've seen it right in the last two years but yes optimistic and coming out of this conference also in uh, Krakow um, Poland is that you can see that everyone is really trying to move the bar up as in delivering better services making sure the processes are more seamless at airports so yeah I'm positive there's great people in the industry that I think will help us bring us to that level. Joanne, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure. Merci. Thank you.